Hello everyone, welcome to the Sane Asylum. And in this video we're going to be looking at, well, recent King pickups. And it's probably going to be the last King pickups of the year because I got so many games I need to play. So we got Emily now. One, two, three, four, six. Six games. First game is Croc Legend of the Gobbles. So yeah, Croc. I remember, pretty sure I played this game on a, it might have been a demo, with um, PlayStation Magazine, it might have been on one of those demo discs, uh, but I think it was the, I think it was the first two levels of the game, I think. I'm not too sure. I'm sh I can't. It's hard. It's hard to remember if I did have this back in the day or not. But um, so yeah, I got this from a charity shop. One fifty. One fifty. Obviously, don't know what they. Obviously, don't know what they're selling. I noticed that with charity shops, they don't know. They don't know what they're selling with games, but records. Oh, records. Oh. Oh, that, the, oh, the, oh, that's a good record, that is. We're going to charge £20 for that record. It's a fucking charity shop. Charging fucking £15, £20 for a record. I can understand if it was a record shop, but, but charging £15 and £20 for a record, just because just, just, you've got some smarts, and then looking on the internet going, oh, we should charge more for this, because records are back in. Like, you know, I'm, I'm fucking believable. I remember, I remember when we, uh, when I was on holiday, and it was a ride album, the shoegazing nineties band, right? And he wanted thirty quid for it. Thirty fucking quid. I thought I, I was after. I, I, I was. I, I literally wanted to, to go to the woman at, at the counter and go, pick, put the record down, and say, "You taking the fucking piss." 30 quid for the record. Unbelievable. But but with computer games, doesn't it, doesn't it doesn't seem to have cottoned on yet in charity shops that these are these are collectible. And they're very hard to get hold of PS1 games in charity shops. You very rarely see uh, PS1 games in a charity shop. You see a lot of fucking PS2 games, a lot of fucking FIFA games. I noticed that a lot of FIFA games and fucking Little Britain, you know, Little Britain probably the worst video game ever. You know, people think Rass people think Rascal is bad, and and Death Trap Dungeon was bad, even though I personally liked that game. You know, Little Britain the game. I'm a lady. I do ladies things. You know, fucking Vicky Paula going around on fucking roller skates and a f and, and fucking and she's firing out fucking green toxic coming out of her ass. You know, fighting toxic waste out of her ass. You just think, you know, what the fuck? So yeah, it's one fifty in a charity shop, and you know, I was very very apprehensive that it wasn't going to work the game. But uh, on my PS2, because my PS2 is on its, you know, it's, it's you know, it's sucking, you know, it's pretty shagged out to be honest, you know, due to you know the the years I've had it, but it works, it works. And what do I think of the game? It's um very typical, you know, your typical nineties platformer game, you know, nineties platformers. Were really, really popular back then. Really popular. I mean, you had Rayman, 
the Crash Bandicoot. And I think this is before Spyro. But, um, but uh, it, seems, it does have a similar feel to those games, you know, like, basically, you know, the plot is... Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's read it. So, help Croc, the crusading crocodile, rescue the peaceful-loving gobble friends from the grass grasp of the evil magician Baron Dante, guiding for a beautifully rendered 3D world on a freewheeling, free-roaming adventure against the evil Baron and his devilish assistants, the Dan... The Dan... The Dantes? So yeah, it's very much like... Very much like uh, Rayman and Spyro, you know. But, um... But very much on a... I mean, I would describe it as... Spyro on a budget, sort of. I mean, it's not a bad. It's not. A, it's not a bad game by any means. It's just again controls very, very, very clunky. But you know that's a PS One era for you, and the, the the camera angles are bloody. The camera angles are not the best, but um, it's it's it's, it's fun, you know. It's very. It's not. It's It isn't, it isn't a... I wouldn't class it as a very original game. But, you know, it's quite, it is quite derivative. But, you know, it, it, it is what it is. It's, it, you know, it, um, it does its job. It's fun. And it's, yeah, it's just a great way to pass a few hours, you know. I mean, I'm. I've, I mean, I'm in the early stages of the of playing the game at the moment, so I might enjoy it more as it goes on. Because at the moment, the levels are a bit. It's uh, it's 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 less action packed at the moment as as uh, Rayman suppose. It's less action packed, but hopefully, if I get through the game. You'll probably the levels will probably improve and get more get more into the story. So yeah, Croc. Legend of the Gobbles. So yeah, not, not a bad game. You know, it's decent, it's enjoyable, you know. The next game is The First SmackDown. WWF SmackDown. Oh, you know, back in the day, definitely had this back in the day, and I remember, and I remember being thrilled and excited with it. Just, I mean, you look at it now, it's just, just, it just looks very, Very blocky. The, 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 the wrestlers in this look really, really, really blocky and awkward. But I remember it being such a such a such a fun little game. And this was the first game to have a season mode in the actual game. So I remember, remember playing that a lot. I remember the second one, enjoying the second one more. Uh, second. Uh, Smackdown a lot more, but uh, I mean it's an improvement on Warzone and, 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 and WWF attitude. Hell of a lot of him, hell of an improvement. But um, so yeah, great, great little game. Can you name those wrestlers? You know, WWE, WWE at its peak. China, The Rock. If you smell Lao, what The Rock? Is cooking. I'm trying to do the eyebrow. Have a nice day. Yeah. You know, WWF at its peak. You know, back. You know, back, back, back at its peak. You know, and it wasn't. It wasn't for the Rock. 
Smackdown wouldn't have, Smackdown wouldn't have exi existed really well. The cat, I mean, the catchphrase comes from The Rock, but um, and of course, you know, WCW had to uh, introduce their secondary show, Thunder, and uh, WWF countered back with their response with SmackDown. You know, some some great, uh, you know, great. I mean, great memories of this game and and and, and SmackDown. The show, just brilliant. You know, WWF at their peak. The Attitude Era, just... You know, they, they, they'll never, they'll never, ever reach those heights again. You know, just, just, just brilliant. So yeah, Smackdown. Really good. Not perfect. But, um... It's, in, it's, it's still enjoyable, and... So yeah, so now we're on to the PS4 games. And you're probably thinking, ooh, what's he got on PS4? What's he got on PS4? Come on, get on with it! All right, calm down, fucking... God, demanding audience, bloody hell. Shouting at me. Stop shouting at me! So yeah, so the first game we're going to look at is... Bomberman... Ah, Super Bomberman R. So yeah, so yeah. If I should have done this video, should have done this video video a while back because I've had this, I've had this quite to, uh, I've had this quite a while. I've had this since, I think I've had this since July. So yeah, so it's been a, been a while. So yeah, Bomberman R. Bomberman R. Basically, your typical. Generic plot of evil emperor wanting to take over the universe and you've got to stop him. You know, it's that sort of typical plot. So yeah, I read the... Uh, shall I read the back out? Right then, children, it's story time! Bomberman is back. He's brought some friends. The Super Bomberman Rangers are going into space to fight for the evil emperor Buggler. Chatting challenge players from all over the world in classic battle mode. Emperor, Emperor Buggler. Nice name, but I prefer to call him Emperor Bugger. Not Emperor Buggler, Emperor Bugger. So yeah, basically, like I said, plot, plot wise, you know, evil, uh, the Emperor Buggler is, is um, basically, he's revived the five dastardly bombers and basically you gotta take on them and emperor bugger to save the universe so there's f so there's five planets well there's an extra one but there's mainly five planets that you need to um need to save and it does have a feel of it does have that feeling of the feeling like The same feeling. I'm trying to get the words out here. That's the trouble. See when you ad lib like I do. Sometimes you can get the. Sometimes you can can't get the words out what you're trying to say. But this game has the same feel. The same feel to Sonic Forces. You know that. You know particularly particularly in the. Um, in the humour, I mean. Gameplay wise, it's more, it's definitely more a slow. But then again, it does, then again, it does. I mean, it depends how you play, what type of player, what type of bomb man player you are. I mean, you can play it really, you can play it really fast if you want. But I always feel that if you play this game really fast, it, you sort of fuck up a lot, you know, particularly, I mean, with this game, it's all about timing and execution, you know, to the levels, you know, trying to bomb all the enemies, you know, it's all about, it's all about timing, you know, it's like, you know, each, I mean, if you've never played, if you've never played a bomb man game, basically, you know, you're, you're stuck in the sort of like a, you're sort of stuck, each level, you're sort of stuck. 
in like a puzzle and you just got to bob your way out and you can take whatever route you, you see fit. So you sort of do that. You start and ask the basic premise of, of Bomberman. And, and I mean, I mean, just, it's not as good as the classic Bomberman games. I mean, it's got, it's got quite a few, I think it's got quite a few of the classic, uh, Bomberman levels in, in, uh, battle mode. And it's, I mean, and battle mode's, you know, pretty, pretty good. Battle mode's pretty good. I mean, I mean, I've asked a great, um, start before you play story mode. I think it's a good, be a good, for people to start the battle mode and get used to the get used to the um, the mechanics of the game and crystal mode is really really is a good little mode as well in in um, Grand Prix mode that's that's a really good mode where basically you got to collect as many crystals as you can from the rival team really good fun really good fun that is so yeah I mean this is a good game. It's a good introduction for for young for the younger gamers to get into Bomberman. It's, it's, like I say, it's good fun. Um, really good, um, silly humour in it, humour in it, and a really good um, quirky little soundtrack. I think it's really, really, you know, it's a it's a really good game. I like it, and I might and one day I might stream it as well. So yeah, Bomberman, Bomberman, Super Bomberman R. Next game is probably my, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, probably my favourite game of the year by by an absolute fucking gunshot. You know, without without a shadow of a doubt, this is probably my favourite game of the year. Now. I bet you can't. Can you guess what it is? No? I'll tell you anyway. So, my game of the year is... Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Well, what can we say about this game? That hasn't probably hasn't already been said. As I try to give my unique, well, unique perspective. So, Spider-Man. Been waiting for this. Been waiting for this game for a while. This game, and I try not to look at trailers. You know, I tend with games. I tend to look at snippets. Of the trailer, because I feel watching trailers and trailers and trailers and trailers and trailers and trailers of games, I find it ruins my experience of the game. Because you sort of, because you sort of look and you're thinking, well, I've watched all these trailers now, you know, and I've got, I've got a feel for the game without even playing it, and it's like, for me, to get a good feel of a game, you know, you. You should you should have you should do it from your your perspective, you know, you know, watching trailers, watching tra endless trailers, and then fucking spoiling fucking spoiling it, whether it's YouTube or whatever, fucking spoiling going. Oh, this what happens. This what this is what happens in the game. This is what happens in the end. It just it just ruins the experience for the gamers, you know, and it's fucking un unnecessary. So. So I watched snippets and I watched, um, I think it was one stream with, with Badger was streaming it, and I thought, you know, I'm thinking, I don't want to really watch any more now. I don't want to watch, watch any more streams of this now, because it'll just, it'll just, it, it, it does, it'll spoil it, you know, it'll spoil the game for you. So I thought, and for some reason, it took me weeks to, to play this for some reason. You know, I don't know, it was bizarre, it was very bizarre, you know. And in my hands, I was going, you know, and in my hands, I was going, I got Spider Man, I've got Spider Man, oh look, I've got Spider Man, everyone, oh look, I've got Spider Man, you know, it took me about two weeks to open it. 
And I was like, I don't know, it was very, very weird. And then I got into it then, and, and I just couldn't put the fucking thing down. Just couldn't put it down. So yeah, what can I tell you about this game, Spider-Man, without spoiling it? Because I've completed it. It took me, I think it took me about a couple of days to complete. But it was, uh, oh, I was just, I was just in my fucking underpants. You know, for 12 hours, just playing it, you know, without, without, um, without a fucking shit break or a piss break. Just holding it in. Holding it in like a twat. Just, just, because I was just hooked. Hooked, like, and sucked. Line and sinker. I was. So, yeah, Spider-Man. <coughs> basic, basic plot. I'm not going to delve into the plot, plot too much, but basically... So the first mission you take on Kingpin. You take on Kingpin. You know, as as Spider Man would say, he likes to play with Willie. Well Wilson, Wilson Fisk. He likes to play with him. Kingpin. So you defeat him and in, and his his gang is pretty much you know, in the shadows. And then this new gang gang appears. This Chinese gang called the Demons, and they wear like masks, sort of like masks from the Purge, and they and they're taking over the trying to take over the city. So there's like a rivalry gang between, like a ri rivalry between Kingpin's ga gang and the Demons, and then of course the plot thickens, and the and you get the plot twists, and there's more and there's more fucking plot twists in it, more twists in this than fucking Juby Jacker. You know, it's like it's a lot, a lot, a lot of twists. I mean, I you saw the twists come in. You did see them coming, but it was still enjoyable. And I think this is going to be a sequel to this game. There's definitely going to be a sequel for sure. So yeah, gameplay. The gameplay is it's very easy to get, very easy to get into, very easy to get into, and it's and the graphics are visually stunning. I mean, you know, it, it, you know, New York, in it just feels so, it just it just feels so so realistic and and, and authentic. It's it's unbelievable, absolutely stunning. The graphics in this, the New York in this, is just it's just brilliant, and you can interact with pedestrians as well as they take selfies. They take selfies with you. It's, with you. It's, Brilliant, and it's and there's plenty of side missions as well, solving crimes, you know, stopping bank robbery, stopping muggings. It's just loads and loads and loads and loads of side missions. And one of the more more interesting side missions is that is is grabbing these, collecting these pigeons for this 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 homeless guy, this hobo. And it just reminded me of Stop the Pigeon, you know. Stop the Pigeon, Stop the Pigeon, Stop the Pigeon, man, grab it, grab it, Stop that Pigeon now! You know, I was half expecting to see Dick Dastardly and Muttley and his fucking, in their fucking flying machines trying to catch the pigeon, you know. <laughs> oh, hello, Jen. Oh, we haven't got the pigeon yet. You know, stop, yeah. Chasing fucking pigeons. Absolutely silly, but but good fun though. So yeah, stop the pigeon. And there's um Harry Osborne's like um research centres where you sort of collect um certain like toxins in the air. Which is quite that's quite which is quite interesting. Sort of sort of like um Sort of maybe a, like a message on global warming there. So I think you've got those missions. You've also got um, Black Cat. You know she 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 she's in it. You got to you got to um, take photographs of each black like um, take photographs of each. It's like a doll that you got to find. Is I think is about. Um, 
20, it's quite a few you need to find. And, it's a, and then, of course, there's um, finding Peter, uh, all of Peter Parker's backpacks that are covered in spider webs. That's quite interesting. I mean, the, and then the more, the more, I mean, it's encouraged to do the side missions. Because the more side missions you do, the more, the, the stronger the, that Spider-Man gets, and he gets more gadgets as well. So, and there's a lot, of, and there's a lot of gadgets he gets. He gets such as electric shock, um, spider drone. You know, he gets all, he gets all types of gadgets, for, and, you, and different costumes as well. So, so you are encouraged, really encouraged to do the side missions, and the side missions are, you know, really. Really, really good. We, really, you know, it's not. It's, you know, it is. It's plenty to do in this game. You know, you've got, like I said, side missions. And of course, the main story is pretty strong, and and the, and the main story missions are really um, diverse as well. There's a, quite a few stealth missions in it, and you can play. And there's a few missions where you play as Mary Jane, which is quite, which is quite interesting. And, uh, I mean, what else can I add to it? I don't think I can add much more to it. You know, it's my, it's, it's, like I say, it's my, it's my game of the year. I mean, I'm going gonna, gonna to wait till Red Dead 2 and get it next year, but, you know, it's, yeah, it's Spider-Man 2 in a nutshell. It's, it, it's You know, it's not, it's not, original. I wouldn't say it's the most original game in the world, but, you know, it has elements of Assassin's Creed, particularly where you're jumping from building to building and, you know, and stealth, stealthing bad guys, in elements of Agents of Mayhem and, and, and games like that. But it is really, really, really fun. And there's a few Easter eggs. If you can get them, there's a few Easter eggs in this. Like the one, the one Easter, the one Easter egg is um, is um, the Avengers Tower, which I found by accident, as you do. And that's really, that's that's really good. So yeah, Spider Man. Really good, really good game. I rec, I recommend it. Next game is Stardew Valley or Steviel, Steviel or Stelvio Valley, you know, or Synth John Valley. Yeah, can you imagine me? Can you imagine me growing fucking flowers and watering plants and going fishing in my little in my little fucking fisherman's hat? No. I didn't think so either. So yeah, Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley is a game I um, got for my birth. I think it was my birthday. Yeah, it was. I got this for my birthday in June. And to be honest, I haven't really, I haven't really played it. To be honest, I mean. Basically, you're this, you're this, you're this guy that's inherited this farm off your grandfather, and you've got a. And I mean, there's no, there's no timer. It's pretty much like an open. It's pretty much like an open world, where you can go fishing, and uh, go, go, you go drinking in a, in a bar, and you play games in the bar, and. I mean, I mean, the, the the farm can come, can become secondary, but but um, you can, I mean, you can have animals in your farm. You can have, you know, grow crops. You can, I think, build. I think you can build. Um, build things as well, and it's in Pelican Town. Pelican Town. No. It, it, the style of this game, it's like a Japanese anime, it's be, you know, it sort of reminds me of Alundra, 
a bit. It's like, it's like, to me, it's like, what would happen if Alundra retired and he wanted to be a farmer? He has that sort of style, which is, which is really, um, which is pretty, uh, pretty cool. The soundtrack is quite, um, the soundtrack is quite, um, calm and very, very, um, very, very soothing, you know, it has a very, it has an ambience of, of tranquility. I mean, you could, you could easily just shut your eyes, you know, cross leg, cross leg naked and just listen to it all day in your house. It just, it has that, has a really calming feeling on, on, on you. But, um, yeah, I need to get I need to get into this a bit more because it's it's one of those games where you don't need to. It's one of those games where you don't need to think. You know, there's no puzzles. You know, there's no fucking. You know, it's not like you, you know you're not on your fucking your fucking edge of your seat, shitting your pants with jump scares. You know, it's just you know it's it's um it's a game at your at your own leisure. I would say. So yeah, Stardew Valley. Need to play it more. You know, really need to play it. And last game is... Street Fighter. 30th Anniversary Collection. So yeah, bought this a while ago as well. So yeah, 30 years of Street Fighter. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. The, the Street Fighter's got to 30 years and it's got I think it's got most of them on you I don't know if it's got all of them on you but I, because I'm not a really I'm not exactly a Street Fighter expert I mean it's got Street Fighter Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter oh, fucking I can't fucking read that Street Fighter 2 what? what? I mean I got thick, thick fucking glasses and even I can't fucking see the writing on this Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting, is it? Street Fighter 2 The New Challenger, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Ghostbusters 2, Ghostbusters 3, Ghostbusters 4, Ghostbusters 2 The Ian Lee, Lee and the Edition. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I mean Street Fighter. So yeah, it's got most of the Street Fighters on you. And I think I've already played this once as well. Oh my god, it's fucking tough, tough. Tougher than old boots. You know, absolutely tough. Tough, 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 tough. And I'm not very good at fighting games anyway, to be honest, but... But, uh, yeah, it's just... Yeah, I need to play this... Properly again. to it. See, I've got so many games I need to play. You know, but... I mean, you can't go wrong with Street Fighter. It's one of the classic... One of the greatest fighting game franchises of all time, isn't it, you know? You know? Ryu! Ryu! Hadouken! Hadouken! Crustic Burger! A Crustic Burger! You know? <laughs> I, I, I love, I love, um... Ryu's, um... catchphrase. This is, it, 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 when he fights, it's so funny. I mean... Wouldn't it be funny... If Roy you just he just replaced it all just replaced all his catchphrases with politicians. You know, just go just go Vladimir Putin, a Vladimir Putin, three some mate, three some mate, a Vladimir Putin, a Vladimir Putin, Donald Trump, a Donald Trump, a Donald Trump, a Kim Jong un, a Kim Jong un. Yeah, it'd be quite funny, wouldn't it? It would be quite funny. So yeah, I don't think I add any more to that. No, I don't think I can. So we got six, six games, which took me thirty-three minutes to um, get through because I like to talk about these games. You know, really like to give you my opinion on them instead of just saying, "Oh, look, I've got these games," and then just go like that. I like to talk about them. That's it. Nearly knock myself in the fucking face. 
you know, I like to talk about them. So yeah, that was, and that's it. So, and then my fucking throat is dry. <coughs> so, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.